The thrilling 2014 Dunlop MSA British Touring Car Championship reached its halfway point with its annual visit to the challenging Croft circuit in the northeast. A massive and enthusiastic crowd crammed into the flat, fast North Yorkshire venue. The record numbers anticipating three more cracking races and they weren't to be disappointed. Despite carrying maximum ballast, it was the BMW of championship leader Colin Turkington that took pole position. But with former champions Jason Plato, Gordon Shedden, Matt Neal and Andrew Jordan rounding out the top five, the scene was perfectly set for a rousing opening race. Turkington, though, made no mistake as the light went out with teammate Rob Collard also making a great start from sixth spot. As the tightly packed cars jostled through the opening corners, Jordan's blue Honda tagged the back of Neil's Civic Tourer and in the concertina effect behind, Nick Foster's BMW speared spectacularly off track and into the infield. Up front, it was Turkington who led from Shedden's Civic Tourer with Plato's MG emerging in third, with battles raging behind. As the top two made their getaway, Plato produced a masterclass in how to defend in touring cars, fending off extreme pressure from the chasing Collard, Jordan and a recovering Neil. Collard did draw alongside once on the drag down to the first corner, but the wily Plato just wasn't to be passed. So, at the flag, it was a flawless Turkington, who notched up his fifth win of the season from Shedden with the valiant Plato holding on to take a desperately hard-fought third place ahead of Collard, Jordan, Neil and Alain Menu's fast-finishing Volkswagen. Jordan was subsequently penalised a place by the race stewards for his opening lap contact with Neil, so he lined up sixth for race two behind Neil, Collard, Plato, Shedden and the mighty impressive Turkington who was once again on pole for what was another all-action affair. There was immediate drama as Rob Austin's Audi came to grief off the line. But up front, though, it was Turkington and Shedden who maximised their front-row starting positions with Collard's BMW in third. Behind them, Plato's busy mirrors were this time filled with Neil's Civic Tourer. The Honda driver finally dived past the struggling MG to grab fourth. A brave move replicated by defending champion Jordan a few laps later. Neil, though, wasn't happy with fourth, and he slipped past Collard for third. Behind them, Menu was now trying to find a way past Plato. After surviving one high-speed, heart-stopping moment, the Swiss star finally edged his Volkswagen ahead, only to be tagged by the MG and spun into the barriers and out of the race. With some great skirmishes all down the field, the crowd was kept royally entertained, but no one could get close to the imperious Turkington, who cruised home to take his 30th career win and 10th at Croft to keep up his amazing record in the northeast. There was post-race drama, however, with Neil's Honda failing the ride height test and Plato being given a 10-place grid penalty for his controversial clash with Menu. So, it was a delighted Jack Goff who found himself on pole alongside Fabrizio Giovanardi's Ford Focus. Plato would start a lowly 16th with Neil right at the very back with a huge amount of work to do. Goff made a good getaway in the Vauxhall Insignia but then clashed with Tom Ingram's Toyota as the gloves came off at the first corner. Through the first lap chaos, it was Giovanardi and Jordan that emerged ahead of Goff but the Italian's lead was short-lived, the Ford spinning off and shedding bodywork to leave Jordan in the clear. Behind Collard was right on his toes, desperately trying to get past Goff, as Turkington, Shedden and Morgan were really getting stuck in. As the carnage mounted, Neil was an early retiree with accident damage after going three abreast with Austin and Warren Scott's Vauxhall. More significantly, Turkington was also heading for the pits with a clutch problem. Back on the track, Jordan was holding a slender advantage with Goff enjoying a great run behind but was under massive attack from multiple race winner Collard and a chasing Matt Jackson. Collard finally barged his way past a sideways Goff with Jackson taking advantage too. Shedden was next man past Goff into fourth and then got involved with an epic duel with Jackson. The pair made contact more than once as Goff, Morgan, Smith, Foster and Manu all joined in the battle. 
the Scot finally falls the issue to take the final spot on the podium. So after a crazy all-action race, it was Jordan who took his fourth win of the season, with Collard completing a good day at Croft in a safe second. Behind Shedden, Jackson held on to fourth, with Adam Morgan's battered Mercedes just pipping Goff's badly bruised Vauxhall by one thousandth of a second for fifth at the end of what had been a brilliant, brilliant race. With the BTCC paddock drawing breath and heading into its mid-season break, Louise Goodman caught up with a delighted race three winner, Andrew Jordan. Andy, an interesting weekend uh, here at Croft, but it's ended up a win for you in the final race of the day, and that's really kept your championship hopes alive, hasn't it? You can say that again, we really, really needed it. We've had a, a very poor um, previous round, and race one and two here weren't too great either, so I can't tell you what relief I feel, and you know, all the guys have still been putting in the hours in, obviously, and uh, you know, thank you to their hard work, and uh, huge, huge relief. I can't tell you how much it means. So we're all going to be get together again at, at Snetterton. What are your thoughts um, looking forward to that race weekend? Well, we know how good racing it is around Snetterton. You know, there's lots of hairpins, lots of big braking areas, which encourage overtaking manoeuvres. So I, I think the racing's going to be as exciting as ever. We've seen here how exciting the racing's been after a, a less exciting autumn park. So I think the racing's on a roll. Everyone's getting a bit more stuck in, and uh, yeah, I can't wait. What kind of car does it suit? I mean, we've seen the last two circuits, it's been really favoured the, the rear-wheel drive cars. What's the situation at Snetterton? Probably rear-wheel drive. You know, there's lots of hairpins where they can really use their traction. But saying that, there's quick corners that the front-wheel drive car and certainly the Honda's really, really good through. So I think over a lap it will be very close, but I still think the BMs are the car to beat. It's always a good weekend, isn't it? It's like in the middle of summer in the middle of the countryside, a really nice place to go and lots of fans camping. It is, you know, the atmosphere there is great. It's after the break, so everyone's raring to go again. The fans also, as you say, lots of campers. The weather's normally really nice, so it makes for a great weekend racing. They changed the circuit a couple of years ago. How do you like the, the new configuration of the track? I think all of it's a real improvement apart from Coram. Coram, to me, used to be a real fast ballsy corner and, and they've taken that out a little bit but the hairpins I can see why they've done it because it makes for overtaking whereas the older circuit didn't encourage as much so I, I can see why they do it and it's a, a good driver's track and a good racer's track. See you there. Thank you.